Good day. Welcome to another session of Fog Accountancy Tutorials. Today we are going to continue our lesson on investment appraisal by looking at the discounted payback period. Now we are actually beginning the discounted cash flow methods. We are done with the non-discounted cash flow methods. We are looking at the discounted cash flow methods. And, and under this uh, subtopic of discounted cash flow methods, we are going to look at the discounted payback period. And then we are also going to look at the net present value method, which we call the MPV. And then we are also going to look at the internal rate of return. which we call the IRR. So these are the three methods we are going to look at. We are also going to talk about the profitability index. Yes. So these are under the discounted cash flow methods. Okay, so we are going to look at the discounted payback period first, and then we'll take time to learn the net present value. So let's begin with the discounted payback period. Now, the discounted payback period is just like the normal payback period that we know. The only difference is that the cash flows that is going to be given to us in the question, we are going to discount the cash flows into today's terms using the approach of the time value of money, which we have studied in the video of time value of money. But I'm going to also explain how to discount again here. After we have discounted the cash flows, the new discounted cash flows will be used to calculate the payback period. That is what we are going to do. Now, how do we do the discounting? The discounting is done by this formula. 1 over 1 plus R raised to the power N. This is how to go by the discounting. Okay? So whatever amount, we are trying to look at the time value of money. So we are going to do the discounting using the company's cost of capital. Okay? So where the R equals to the cost of capital of the company, and then N equals to the number of years you are discounting. So we all know that the time value of money has taught us. If you do not really understand how to do this, you can go back to my video on the time value of money. That is why I did that before coming here. Okay, now, to discount, the number of years has to do with the number of years you are discounting, and I said that time value of money means that uh, the value of a CD or a dollar today will not be the same as the value in four or five years to come. And so looking at the cash flows that are being given to us, if we are told that in 10 years time or in three years time, the project will give a cash flow of 20,000 in three years time, the 20,000 in three years time in terms of its value will not be the same as 20,000 in today's times. So what we need to do is that we are going to use the cost of capital which in this case, we assume that it factors the inflation and all other factors that causes the monetary value to change. We are going to discount them into today's terms so that at least we can use today's terms. we we'll look at the cash flow in today's terms, the purchasing power of the money in today's terms to be able to determine the payback period and not just the value of the money in the future terms. Okay, and so one over one plus R, where R will be the cost of capital or the rates, and then N is the number of years you are discounting. And that is what we are going to you do. And so without wasting my time, let us take a question straight away to illustrate this because we have already studied the payback period. There's no need to waste my time. I'm just going to teach you the discounting as I solve the question. Okay, so let's take this question. Akosia at Accra Limited is deciding to embark on a project. The initial capital outlay of the project is 40,000 Ghana cities and will produce the following cash flows for each of the years up to year four. So year one is 15,000, year two is 8,000, year three 20,000, and year four 7,000. The cost of capital for Akusia Takra Limited is 10%. You are required to calculate the payback period 
of this project. Okay. And so we are going to do the payback period. Now, if it was a normal payback period, we just list the cash flows, find the cumulative cash flows, and then we find the payback period. But because we are looking at the discounted payback period, we are first going to list the cash flows, discount the cash flows, and then we use the discounted cash flows to do the cumulative cash flows before we find the payback period. That is as simple as ABC. And so look at how I'm going to go by this. So I will say year, then I will say cash flow. This is what we have from the question. And then I will use the discounting factor here. And then this will be the discounted cash flows. Before I'll talk about the cumulative discounted cash flows. All right, so please watch what I'm doing. We all know that it should have been the cash flows and the cumulative, but we need to first discount the cash flows before we find the cumulative discounted cash flows. So let us look at that. We have year zero, year one, year two, year three, and then year four. Now, year zero means that that is the initial capital outlay. According to the question, it is 40,000 Ghana cities, and it's in brackets because it's an initial capital outlay. And then the cash inflows, year one is 15,000, year two is 8,000, year three is 20,000, and then year four, 7,000. So this is, or these are the cash flows. Now, these are what we already have from the question. Now we are going to first discount these cash flows, and then we get the discounted cash flows, okay? And so, and the discounting, this is what I mean. The formula for discounting is 1 over 1 plus R raised to the power N, okay? And this is what we are going to do. So we are going to use this formula to get all the discounting factors. Now, looking at the first one, 1 over 1 plus R. We are told that the company's cost of capital is 10%. So the discounting factor is at 10%. And then the N is the number of years. So watch very closely what I'm going to do. Here, because it is year zero, it's going to be 1 over 1 plus. The rate is 10%, 0 0.10. Watch very well. 1 over 1 plus 0 0.10. Raised to the power n. n is the number of years. And here, the number of years is zero. And so, it will be raised to the power zero. Now, we all know that any number raised to the power zero is one. And so, this is going to be one over one, which is one. So, what it means is that for the first year, the discounting factor is one. That is the meaning. Look at this very well. We use this formula to get that. Now, there are instances where you can have present value tables and you can pick from that. But I'm showing you how to calculate it. Then, in year one, this is year zero, we had one. In year one, it's going to be one. So, you're going to use your calculator to find this. One over one plus 0 0.10 raised to the power one because we are now in year one. And so, when you punch this on your calculator, one over one plus, the rate will be constant at 10%. And then the number of years, so raised to the power 1, is going to give you 0 0.909. And remember to always run your discounting factor to three decimal places. And so we are going to have 0 0.909. 0 0.909. And then year 2, you are just going to change the power here to 2. 1 over 1 plus 0. 0 0.10. This will remain constant. What is going to change is the number of years. So you are going to use the same thing and you just keep changing the number of years, which is the power of the denominator. You keep changing it till you get all your discounting factors. And so that is going to give us 0 0.826. And then year 3, when you raise this to the power 3, the discounting factor is going to be 0 0.751. And when you change this to Four, the discounting factor is going to be 0 0.683. So this is the idea of the discounting. We are bringing these cash flows into their present values. 
by losing 10% as a discounting factor. And then we get the discounted cash flows. And so what we are going to do now to get the discounted cash flows is very simple. You multiply the original cash flows by the discounting factors you just had. Okay, so go through this process to get the discounting factors. Then you multiply each of the cash flows by their discounting factors to get the discounted cash flows. And so 40,000 times 1 is still 40,000. So you put that in brackets. Then 15,000 times 0 0.909. I said you use all the three decimal places. That is going to give us 13,635. And then 8,000 by 0 0.826. It's going to give us 6,608. And then 20,000 by 0 0.71 is going to give us 15,020. And then 7,000 by 0 0.683 is going to give us 4,781. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I mean. So, we now have the discounted cash flows. So, instead of using the old cash flows, to find the cumulative cash flows and find your payback period, you are now going to use the discounted cash flows to rather accumulate and find your payback period. So this now becomes irrelevant after you do the discounting. This is now your focus, the new discounted cash flows. You are going to use that to do the cumulative discounted cash flows and you can determine your payback period by that. Okay. Now, let's begin to accumulate. So in the first year, the cumulative discounted cash flow is 40,000 in brackets. Hey, that is in year zero. In year one, the project has paid back a discounted cash flow of 13,635. So we subtract and get the remaining balance here. And that is 26,365 in brackets. We still have more to pay back. Now in year two, the project is paying back a discounted cash flow of 608. So when you subtract, you have 19,000. 757, also in brackets. Yes, so this is it. And then in, then in year three, the project is paying back a discounted cash flow of 15,020. And so when you subtract, you still have 4,737, also in bracket, to recover. And then in year four, the project is paying 4,781. And so you are going to get 44 positive. Yes, 44 CDs as your positive. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this is how to go by the cumulative discounted cash flows. I know that doing the cumulative is not a problem for you. What is new to most of you is the discounting, which I want you to look at it very well. Because in our next video, I'm going to talk about the net present value, which we are going to use for discounting extensively. And we are also going to look at the internal rate of return. So this is a cumulative. So what is the payback period? That is the question. What is the payback period of this project? If you are using the discounted payback, what is the discounted payback period? Now, the project took four years. If the cash flows are accruing only at the end of the year, then we can say that the project's payback period is four years. But if it is accruing evenly over the year, then we can say that the payback period is three years plus some months. Okay, so it's going to be the discounted payback period is going to be three years plus four seven three seven over four seven eight one times twelve. And that is going to give us three point nine nine years. You can leave that in decimal. Okay, so it means that it's going to give us 3.99 years, very close to four years. This is an approximately four years return project. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, the figures may not be very consistent. They may be too irregular. But the most important thing that I want you to understand is how to do the discounting before you look for your payback period. So we have learned the regular payback period, and we have also looked at the discounted payback period. And I'm sure this is very understandable. Okay. This will bring us to the end of part four of our video on investment appraisal. We are going to look at the part five where I'm going to talk about the net present value and then proceed to talk about the internal rate of return. Remember to subscribe to this channel if it's your first time. Share this video and let others also have a benefit. And until we meet again for the next video, it's bye for now. Thank you.